In the fall of 2017, a mysterious spike in airborne radioactivity was detected across Europe, triggering a wave of concern and speculation about its origins. This unusual event, while not posing an immediate threat to human health, raised questions about the potential nuclear incidents and the safety of nuclear facilities across the continent. In this video, we'll delve into the details of the 2017 airborne radioactivity increase in Europe, examining the scientific data, the investigations that were conducted, and the possible explanations that have been proposed. And who knows, perhaps the next big discovery in nuclear forensics or environmental monitoring will be made by someone watching this video right now. In the fall of 2017, a mysterious increase in airborne radioactivity was detected across Europe, setting off a wave of concern and speculation. Starting in late September, monitoring stations across the continent began picking up traces of ruthenium-106, a radioactive isotope, in the air. While the levels of ruthenium-106 were low, not posing an immediate threat to human health in most of Europe, the unusual nature of this detection raised questions about its origins and the potential for a nuclear incident somewhere on the continent. The source of the radioactive release was widely suspected to be in Russia due to the pattern of detections and the concentration of ruthenium-106 in the eastern parts of Europe. However, the Russian government denied any involvement or knowledge of a nuclear mishap that could have caused the radiation spike. This lack of transparency and the mysterious nature of the release fueled speculation and concern among the public and the scientific community. Experts estimated that while the low levels of radiation detected across Europe were not harmful, the source of the release likely experienced much higher levels of radiation, potentially posing a risk to the individuals in its vicinity. As the mysterious radioactive plume spread across Europe, various monitoring networks and agencies sprang into action, trying to identify the source and assess the potential risks. In early October of 2017, several European countries reported detecting elevated levels of ruthenium-106 in the air. Switzerland's Federal Office of Public Health noted an increase in radioactive ruthenium-106 particles starting on September 25th. France's Institute of Radio Protection and Nuclear Safety also detected elevated levels in early October, which gradually decreased and disappeared by October 13th. The IRSN conducted a detailed assessment of the situation, concluding that while there was no significant health risk for most people in Europe, the amount of radiation released was substantial. They estimated that the source of the release likely had an activity of 100 to 300 terabecquerels, a significant amount of radioactivity that would have required the evacuation of people within a several kilometer radius. This raised concerns about the potential source of the release and the possible impact on those living near it. The fact that the source remained unidentified added to the mystery and fueled speculation about a potential nuclear incident at a power plant or other facility. Here's a timeline of how the situation developed and the public announcements that were made. On September 25th, the Swiss Federal Office of Public Health reports an increase in radioactive ruthenium-106 particles in the air. On September 27th, the Greek Atomic Energy Commission announces increased radiation levels in Athens attributed to the presence of ruthenium-106. On September 29th, the German Office for Radiation Protection reports elevated levels of radioactivity, later identified as ruthenium-106. On October 3rd, the Austrian Ministry of the Environment informs the public about the detection of ruthenium-106. The Finnish Radiation and Nuclear Safety Authority also announces increased radioactivity in samples collected since September 28th. On October 6th, the French Institute of Radio Protection and Nuclear Safety reports that the initially high levels of ruthenium-106 have been steadily decreasing. On October 9th, the Nuclear Safety Administration of the Republic of Slovenia announces the detection of low levels of ruthenium-106 in the atmosphere. October 13th, the IRSN reports that ruthenium-106 is no longer detected in France. Initial investigations pointed towards Eastern Europe, with German authorities estimating the source to be over 1,000 kilometers away. Further analysis by the German Federal Radiation Protection Service narrowed down the potential location to the southern Urals region in Russia or Kazakhstan. The IRSN ruled out a nuclear reactor as the source, suggesting instead a spent fuel treatment facility or a sensor producing radioactive medicine. They also pointed to the southern Urals as the likely origin. Data from Russian monitoring stations revealed a significant increase in ruthenium-106 levels in the southern Urals region in late September 2017. This coincided with the detection of ruthenium-106 decayed products in Tartarstan and high levels of radioactive contamination in Volgograd and Rostov-on-Don. Suspicion quickly fell upon the Mayak reprocessing and isotope production plant, a nuclear facility located in the southern Urals. 
However, both Mayak authorities and Rosatom, the Russian state nuclear agency, initially denied any connection to the release. In November 2017, the Russian government admitted to a radiation spike near Mayak, but maintained that the available data was insufficient to confirm the source of the pollution. They also denied any knowledge of an incident at the facility. However, in December of 2017, a Mayak executive admitted that ruthenium-106 is routinely released during the reprocessing of spent nuclear fuel. He downplayed the amount released and denied that Mayak was the source of the radiation spike. Investigating the incident within Russia was hampered by the secrecy surrounding Mayak, a closed city with restricted access, and by government harassment of those who raised concerns about nuclear safety. Despite these challenges, an international committee led by the Russian Academy of Sciences Nuclear Safety Institute was formed to investigate the incident. The IRSN, in their report to the committee, concluded that the most likely source was a spent fuel treatment facility in the southern Urals, potentially linked to an unsuccessful attempt to produce cerium-144, a radioactive isotope used in scientific research. While the non-Russian members of the committee accepted this conclusion, the Russian members maintained that an inspection of Mayak had found no anomalies and suggested that a rare meteorological event might have transported the ruthenium-106 from another location. However, in 2019, a group of European nuclear research institutions published a study providing clear evidence that the leak originated from the southern Urals, strongly implicating the Mayak plant as the source of the 2017 ruthenium-106 release. This incident, while ultimately not causing any significant harm to human health, highlighted the importance of transparency and international cooperation in addressing potential nuclear incidents. It also underscored the need for robust environmental monitoring systems and the public's right to know about potential risks to their health and safety. Thank you everyone for watching. My name's The Big Why. Don't forget to drop a like, and if you're new to the Why Not family, a follow. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.